so I'm walking down the street and this chick comes up to me and says, hey man, what's dual time base all about? I'm thinking that's a good question. It's a little hard to explain, so maybe I should do a YouTube video here. So here we are looking at a little pulse train coming out of this little microcontroller board here. And it's just a uh, pulse train at about 143 uh, kilocycles there. And now we can look at the falling edge. We're triggering on this falling edge here. And we can zoom in on that in any detail we want, measure our fall time. We can switch to, uh, we could go to trigger menu here, switch to the rising edge, measure our rise time. Yeah, no problem. Doesn't tell us a lot. What if we want to do something a little different? What if we want to measure the jitter on this signal? What if we want to trigger, we'll go back to falling edge. What if we want to trigger on this falling edge, but we'll move this off center now, but we want to zoom in on that same level of detail on falling edge maybe five pulses away or even more. All right, let's center ourselves right here. We're at five microseconds for division now, right? We're going to go into our dual time base mode and we're going to hit our window button and this cursor here, well, it's all the way over there now. Let's zoom that, open that up a bit. That cursor is telling us where we will be zoomed in on, on our second time base. All right, now we're at five microseconds per division and this window, you probably can't see this here. I don't have a high enough resolution camera, but this window is, is telling me that this, this time here is 100 nanoseconds. It's listed on the display here. And we can move that 100 nanoseconds anywhere we want. So let's go about six pulses over. And now we're going to be triggering on this rising edge, but we're going to zoom into the 100 nanoseconds per division detail on that edge right there. And we're going to be zoomed in on that. Now we're going to go from, the first was main. This is window, it tells us where we're going to be zoomed in on. That's our second time base. And now when we hit the window button, now we're looking at nothing but that rising edge. All right, and we're going to go into more level detail. Now it's 50 nanoseconds, 25. And we're starting to see a little jitter here, aren't we? We're going to see something that we didn't know was there. Looks like I already have persistence on. Let's uh, save that for later. Turn persistence off. There we go. So think about this for a minute. We were at 5 microseconds per division, all right? And now we're looking at 5 nanoseconds per division, which is basically a 1,000 times. A 1,000 times this. So we were triggering on a signal that's a 1,000 times the width of this uh, this uh, display in that direction. We're basically triggering on a signal that's 500 feet that way, but we're looking into the level of detail of 5 nanoseconds per division on the, on the uh, rising edge. And now we can uh, look at this in other ways. We can hit acquire, go to average. Now we're averaging. Uh, we're at 16 averages, so we're taking 16 samples and averaging it and showing where that is. The jitter doesn't look too bad, does it? It doesn't look quite as bad. You can see how this, this uh, jitter would affect us over time. But what we really want to look at, we go back to a sample here, and we're going to put on what we had before, persistence. That's in the display menu. Persist is off. Go to one second. Basically what's happening here is any pixel that's more than one second old just fades away. And raise that to two seconds, or five seconds. And here we have a nice easy way to measure our jitter now, right? From 10 pulses away, we're at five nanoseconds for the division. So 5, 10, 15, 20. We're about 25 nanoseconds of jitter there. Now this accumulates over time too. If we could we could trigger on a signal that's 20 pulses of that direction instead of six, uh, we would see a lot more jitter than that. It's accumulative. And this basically goes down to the phase noise of the oscillator that's in here. We're using the built-in RC oscillator in here. It's not really a problem for anything, you know, for most things that you use a microcontroller for. I'm just putting my finger on there. You can see temperature from my body heat actually is uh, increasing the jitter quite a bit. I mean, there's something like this would usually be used in a car alarm or your remote keyless entry. And if you hit the button one day and the car unlocks in a second, and the next day it locks and opens in uh, 1.001 seconds. You don't care. It doesn't matter. This jitter means nothing. But uh, for digital signal processing and things like that, this could uh, destroy everything you're trying to do. But anyway, that's a good example. At least I hope it's a good example of what dual time base is all about. So we're zoomed in on that signal there while triggering up. There's our trigger indicator. It's back on the screen again. We were triggering on this rising edge here and zoomed in right in the center of that scope. All right, hope that's useful for you to know. It's a, it's a very handy tool, the dual time base. And that's it for now. Until next time, guys.